Self-Defense, an instructional video for everyone. Your chances of being involved in a serious crime in your lifetime are 1 in 20. So what you're about to see will perhaps save your life someday or a loved one's. Any person, male, female, teenager, or elderly, can learn the basic self-defense techniques demonstrated in this video. They are simple, logical, and effective, and you don't need a black belt in karate to perform them. As a normal human being, it is emotionally and mentally repugnant for you to intentionally inflict injury on another person. However, you must realize that an assailant does not have the same moral instincts that you do. The techniques you're about to see were designed to inflict pain on that assailant, pain that will stun and temporarily incapacitate. There are also techniques which, if executed with sufficient force, could cause permanent injury or even death. Finally, you should know that you will have doubts about your ability to execute certain defense techniques under a highly stressful situation. This is only normal. But the more you practice these techniques, you'll find the more your confidence will grow. And like everything else in life, the more confidence you have in yourself, the more likely you are to succeed. Your self-defense instructor is Joseph Cayazzo, a highly decorated police officer for 14 years and a highly certified police academy instructor for 10 of those 14 years, and a self-defense expert. Joe has dedicated his non-working hours to teaching various groups throughout the country what he's about to teach you, the art of self-defense. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Tammy and Jeff. Appreciate it. Before we get started with this video, there's some very important factors we need to discuss. First of all, this is not a martial arts video. This video is basic self-defense. And you're probably wondering, what's basic self-defense? Well, basic self-defense is some techniques that we're going to show you that if an attacker should grab you, that you're going to be able to escape that attacker and run. We don't want to stand there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight with this person. That's not what we want to do. We want to escape get away from them, get help. Tammy and Jeff, my two assistants, are both martial arts experts. We've gone through some very basic, simple techniques, which we're going to train you to utilize through this video. You don't have to be a martial artist or a black belt to achieve the results of this video. This is designed for the lay person at home that doesn't have the time to go to a martial arts studio, that if they get involved with some type of altercation that they can defend themselves and defend themselves to a point where they won't be hurt or won't be a victim. But in order to achieve this, what we need to do, number one, is we have to practice. And how do we practice? Well, first of all, you might use your husband, you might use your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, what have you. Go through the technique slow and deliberate. Get the feel of everything. Get the fluidity behind it. But when you're practicing, don't horseplay. Because if you horseplay, you're liable to hurt one another. And that's not going to be good for myself or for you either. One thing that we need to talk about is every person is unique. And none of these techniques are really absolute. What works for me might not work for Jeff or might not work for Tammy. Every person has their own pain tolerance level. React to the situation. What happens if we're attacked? Well, there's many things that are going to happen. First of all, we're going to be scared. And that's natural. If you're not scared, there's something wrong. When I instruct police officers in the academy, we inform them, we're scared too. During a fight or an altercation we get into, yeah, we do get scared. What I need to tell you is not only will you be scared, but some other factors are going to happen into your system. First of all, you're going to get what we call tunnel vision. What tunnel vision is, is you have peripheral vision from side to side. Tunnel vision is going to narrow that peripheral down. So now you're not going to be aware as to what's to your right or what's to your left. Another thing that's going to occur is you're not going to lose all concept of time and distance. What seems to have taken an eternity might have only been 5, 10 seconds. Everything goes into a slow motion mode. If you've ever been in a traffic accident, right on impact, how everything kind of slows down, the same thing is going to happen if an attack comes on to you. Another thing that we're going to experience is we're going to start pumping adrenaline, and we're going to go through what we call adrenaline dump. And you're going to start feeling a lot more sensation, and that's part of the reasons why we have the tunnel vision, and uh, we also lose audio perception. 
after the attack is over, several factors are going to be in line, too. One of them being is depression. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be physically exhausted. Our law enforcement officers, when we train them and we've talked to them after they've been in some type of altercation, all have experienced the same thing. Their, their feet, they're physically exhausted because that adrenaline keyed them up so high, now the adrenaline has left their system. What we need to do is what we're trying to talk to you about is, during this attack, we need to develop what we call psychomotor skills. And you're probably saying, well, what's a psychomotor skill? The best way to describe it is, how many times you left for work, left, went through the front door, you got about two or three blocks up and said, did I lock that door or not? It's repetitive nature, and that's what a psychomotor skill is, something that becomes repetitive after time and time. But in order to achieve what we call a psychomotor skill, it takes three to 5,000 times of practice at game speed. And a game speed is full motion, full speed. So what we want you to do is practice slow at first and then start getting speed. You want to develop your technique. When we show you a technique, we want you to develop it, then start speed. Because if you just go through it with speed, you're not going to get the proper angles, you're not going to get the proper effect of the technique that we're trying to show you. Also during the attack, you're going to get hit, and you're probably going to get hurt. Just because you watch this video doesn't mean, I'm Superman or I'm Macho Woman. It's not going to happen, folks. The attacker will punch you, and you're probably going to get hurt. But what you need to do is suck it up. It hurts, yes, but let's react to the injury. Let's react to the pain. Let's not stand there. I'd sooner take a broken nose than a broken neck. And as you can see, we haven't talked anything at all about weapons. And we're not going to. Because in a one-hour video on basic self-defense, I can't teach you how to disarm a person. So what I'm trying to tell you is if a person has a weapon, that person is in charge of the whole situation. When he puts that weapon down at that time, we'll go ahead and try to neutralize the situation. We're going to react when the weapon is gone. Again, we need to practice the techniques. You're not going to learn the techniques by sitting in front of the video and watching them say, oh, I understand. You're going to have to actually get out and work with them. Hopefully, by working with them, it could possibly save your life. Stance. Stance. It's one of the most important aspects in defensive tactics. Everything is going to hinge from our stance. We're going to get depth and width from it. Also, we're going to get power. If we build a house, we don't start building a house from the roof down. We start from the floor up. So what we're going to do is build a foundation in our stance. From this point on, everything is going to hinge on a good, proper stance. And with Jeff helping me out, most people, when they get together, they stand with their feet close together, and legs are fairly straight. There's no balance. If I were to push Jeff, I can displace him very easily. Now, if I have Jeff go ahead and take his feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider, bend his knees slightly, now we have some balance and a little bit of depth, so I can push him. It's a little bit harder to move him off balance. Now, what we do with Jeff, drop the right leg back about a foot and a half, two feet, bend the leg slightly, now we have good depth and balance. So if I were to push Jeff from the rear, he's a little steadier. If he puts his feet together again, then straighten them out. Now if I push him from the rear, he has no balance. So what we want to do, the foundation to defensive tactics is good balance. When we start punching, kicking, any technique we do from this point out is going to hinge on a good solid foundation. Hand strikes. Okay, Tammy, we've, we've discussed the stance, and we didn't give you the stance so you could look pretty. What we're going to do is put this stance to a tactical use right now. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to throw a punch. And you ever see the movies when the cowboys come up and they get in these big fist fights? Well, the first thing they do is they hook them from right field and they come out. All well and good in the movies, but for a tactical purpose, it stinks. Because as the arm hooks out, we have a great transfer of energy loss. The energy is going to be lost here. And if the fist isn't tight, we're going to have another energy loss out this way. So what we want to do is we want to roll a nice tight fist up. And what we, when we roll the fist up, and we're going to be like a locomotion piston. We're going to come up and into our target. The way we can make the fist is take our left hand, put a palm up. Our right hand, lay on top. Now with the thumb of our left hand, take it and roll the fingers up nice and tight. Bring them in now with the thumb, just lay it over top. As you can see, right in the web, there's no openings, so I can't get my finger in. Now, when I 
in the morning, you get your cup of coffee out and you grab the pot. You ever notice the way your wrist kind of bends down? That's the same position we want to put our fist in. What we've done is we cantered the wrist, and by doing so, we've now eliminated energy loss. When the punch is thrown, the area we're going to be hitting is the solar plexus, so if the punch comes out straight out, all right, we've taken the whole hand, relax a second, okay. and we've used it from here all the way up as one motion now. As we go in like a piston, go in and we strike. Again, we're striking with the top two knuckles. That's what we want to hit with. So what we're going to do, is I want you to stand, I'm not going to hit you, is I want to get in close with you. Okay. And if I'm standing from this distance and I just throw a punch, I'm not going to be very effective. I want to get in, and as I throw the punch, I'm going to get into my stance, and the punch, I'm going to spring load everything, and it's going to come from the hip, and I'm going to torque in. All right? Again, I'm not going to hook out. I'm going to come straight through. And what I do, as I'm coming through, I want to exert, I want to exhale. And but what we want to do in our exhaling, we want to say back. It's something that the attacker is going to understand. When I come through there, back! Everything comes through nice and easy, straight out. He understands it. Maybe this guy doesn't want me around. That's what he's thinking right now, okay? That's one of the techniques we can do with it. Again, as we punch, we're not going to focus here. My focal point is behind you, so when I punch, everything is going to come all the way in the back. And I'm going to focus there. I'm going to go right through you and aim into. Okay? You understand that? Mm -hmm. A couple other techniques. One other thing. Do you drive a car? Of course. Do you have keys? You know it. Okay. Put your keys out. Great weapon. Do you ever think of your keys as a weapon? Yes. Okay, what we want you to do with them is, see how the teeth are? The key has a flat end and a rigid end, and rigid end are the teeth. What we want you to do is take your keys and put them in between your webs of your fingers, get them set to however you want it, teeth facing away from your knuckles. Then we roll a tight fist up, all right? Now, as you can see the way the keys are, what you're going to do with it, it's going to be a little different type of strike. It's not going to be a straight focus strike it's going to be a strike into this nature. What we're again doing is spring loading from the hips, from the leg, and we're going to go for the face, target area in the eyes, and we're going to do a cutting motion. So as you'd come through, you'd cut across the person's face. Again, as we go through the strike, see how I've cantered away from you? Now I'm ready to run. I've, I've, I've hit you, and I'm ready to get out of the way. That's what I want to do. I don't want to fight you. I want to flee from you, and that's going to give me ample time. Okay. Understand? Yes, I do. Okay. What I'd like to do right now is have Jeff come out uh, and demonstrate some things. Jeff, well, Jeff's not taking a break. He's not just reading a newspaper here. This does have tactical value to it. Jeff? Okay, an old paper here. Very flimsy, non-aggressive object. But in the case of an attack situation, I can transfer this object into a weapon on my behalf. It was rolled up fairly tight. Not a lot of technique here. Just rolled up. Now we have a somewhat stiff object. The same method that Joe explained with your energy transfer from the hip in a punching manner, we can use this uh, paper now as a baton type weapon. My weak hand, which would be my left hand since I'm right handed, will be palm up in the front end of the uh, paper, my strong hand palm down for support. Okay, from here, take the step in, not bring my elbow out, but tucking it nice and close, penetrating right through. Like Joe said, I don't want to go from here and just hit like that. It's not going to cut it. Bring it back. Have some audio. Back! Back! If this would make contact from here, the penetration power will send the attacker back a couple of feet, and you'll serve the purpose. This also can be done with an umbrella, a magazine, anything you can wrap up into this basic form. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. OK. Tammy. It's some, you know, we have some small men and some small women around, and their hands aren't quite big enough to make the fist, and they're saying, what if, if I can't make a fist and hurt somebody? Well, we can do another thing with the hand, which is not really that unique or that hard. You know when you grab a bottle, right. the way your hand fits around it, or a jar, the thumb, fingers together, well, that's a, the web of the hand, we're going to use that as a weapon now. Again, like we did earlier when we threw the punch, I'm going to get back in my stance, now, I'm going to spring load from the, the hip again as I throw with my hand open as if I'm picking up a jar. I'm going to strike for the neck area. I'm going to come up into the neck and I'm going to thrust up. I'm not going to be straight out, but it's still, again, a piston type motion. And I'm, no I'm not out chicken winging it. I'm coming straight up through into the throat. 
focus point is back. Stand there, don't move, please. As I get back, back! Everything comes through. It's gonna push the attacker back. Or we can use the palm of the hand, and we're gonna use it underneath the chin. Again, we're down. Now, my focus point is here. As I come through, I'm gonna hit the chin, hyperextend the neck and back. Again, same back. If you do any one of these three techniques, I think the person's gonna get the general idea you don't want them around, okay? Joe has explained to you that you should exhale as you exert force. This is important as it provides the greatest force at the precise time of impact. It is the same as in any sport or activity. When you are mustering your power, you exhale. The open hand strikes to the throat and chin, as Joe demonstrated, are very effective. The throat strike can cause damage to the bronchial tube and could choke the assailant. The palm strike, demonstrated to the chin, can also be directed to the nose in the same manner and with enough force could drive the nose bones into the base of the brain, resulting in death or permanent injury. To use the keys as a weapon, you should have the keys set in your hand before you walk out into an unprotected area. Have them in place and ready to use as you walk toward your car, house, or work, or wherever you might be vulnerable. Forearm strike. The forearm strike, the part of the arm we're gonna use is the area between the wrist in the pocket of the elbow, the underside of the forearm. Not like the football players do when they come up and they throw the forearm in. What we want to utilize this strike for, it's the same strike and fashion and cutting fashion as when we made the fist and sliced across the face with the keys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this part of the arm and we're going to plant it on the side of the neck or the brachial plexus, which runs from the ear to where the neck and the triceps meet. What we want to do with this is cause what we call motor dysfunction. What a motor dysfunction is, I'm going to stun the brain with pain. And the way we start, again, in our stance, as we throw the punch, it comes up, spring-loaded, up and into the neck. For demonstration purposes, I won't strike Jeff in the neck because I could knock him out, and I could hurt him seriously. I'm going to be striking the uh, arm. Are you ready, Jeff? Again, we're in this position, Always. making your fist. You come up, plant. Thanks. All right, as you plant, sorry about that. Need that. Again, everything comes from the hip in. If I were to, uh, to plant that type of force on his neck, he would definitely go down. This technique will be utilized if someone was choking you. You just come up over and strike. Front elbow strike. Okay, front elbow strike, what we're going to demonstrate is the portion we're going to be striking with is from the point of the elbow to about three inches in. This is our, our area that we're going to be striking with, and the target area on the attacker is going to be the face. The face from the ear to the chin or from the eye to the chin bone. That whole area is what we're going to be aiming for. And the best way to start to strike is you're in your stance. Just bring your arm up about shoulder length. Take your thumb and place your thumb towards your chest. That's the area that we want, the angle that we want. That's going to set everything up so as we start to go through the this, this strike, it's going to go right into position. Now, what we're going to do is step. We're in our stance again, and we're going to step. We're going to take a big step with our right foot, and we're going to actually step into the attacker. Now, as we're stepping in, we're throwing the elbow. We're going to step, cocking everything, twisting, and throwing in to the elbow. You understand what I'm trying? Yeah. The theory behind it. What we're doing, again, is everything's coming from the hip. We're not just going to go up there and say, I'm going to hit you with my elbow. We're going to throw everything from the ground up and in, all of our body weight. If you would, Jeff, would you please stand here? Tammy, go ahead, nice and slow, get the feel of it, step in and throw the elbow. And the target area, again, is this side of Jeff's face. Okay, very good. Again, walk through it, nice and easy. Bring your arm up. There you go. You want to come straight up in. Just walk straight into him. Okay. Okay. Very good. One thing I did notice, she hit a little bit further down from the face. We actually hit the uh, side of the neck, which is the brachial plexus. That is also a good strike. If you should happen to hit the brachial plexus, we've got an added bonus. He's still going to go down. We're going to have another motor dysfunction. Joe has referred to the brachial plexus and showed you where it is located in the neck area. 
There is one on each side of the neck, so it doesn't matter which side you strike. The brachial plexus reaches nerves to the brain and arms. A good strike will create major pain and stun the assailant, causing motor dysfunction. Rear elbow strike. I'm going to demonstrate the rear elbow strike. Jeff, if you could get into position and, and actually go through a rear elbow strike for us. As you can see, what, what we started earlier when we were throwing the punch, it was a piston motion straight. Now, the rear elbow strike is a piston motion to the rear. Again, we're in close to the body. We're not chicken winging it out, and we're adding extra support with our weak hand. Go ahead, Jeff, again. Jeff is actually, as he's coming back and turning his whole body into it, he's pushing back with his other hand and driving into the solar plex area of the attacker. This would be excellent if a person were to come up and grab you from behind. Back. There's a modification to it also, where we can open up and do a chicken wing instead of going with the piston motion straight, same as with the front motion, the front elbow strike as Tammy demonstrated, the rear elbow strike is up and back, which you would be hitting to the facial area of the attacker coming from behind. If you could demonstrate for us, please. That's the rear elbow strike. Very simple, very effective. Wrist break. Okay, Tammy, what we're going to demonstrate now is the one-handed wrist break away. If a person was to grab you by the wrist, what's your first reaction? Pull back. Pull back? Well, obviously it didn't work. No. There's an easier way to do it. What we're going to try to do is go to the path of least resistance. And that would be, if I grab you, between the thumb and fingers. That's the least resistance. You're going to break out in this fashion. The way we do it is you make a fist like we did earlier. Now you take your thumb and extend your thumb as if you were hitchhiking, and you roll your thumb out into that fashion, exactly, going towards the least resistance. Go ahead and do it. Okay, now I'm gonna squeeze a little harder this time. Go ahead. That was what easier. Happened? Okay, was it easier? What was? What did it feel like? It felt like it popped it right out. Okay, exactly. So what we're gonna do is one step further. As I grab you and you make your breakaway, you're gonna turn and run. That's what we wanna do. We don't wanna stand here and fight. We wanna get away. Go ahead. Then you make your breakaway. Okay. Two hand wrist break. Okay, Timmy, now we're going to go through the two-handed wrist breakaway. What that is, if somebody grabs you with both hands and pulls you in, you're probably thinking, well, wait a second. With the one-handed, you said you want to roll out. How am I going to roll out? Well, the point of released resistance is between the thumbs. No matter how big the person is that's, that is grabbing you, this is the weakest point of his grab or her grab. So what you want to do, again, make a fist. The key to it is the fist. As you make the fist with your hand that's not being entrapped by the attacker, reach over the top, grab your other fist from the bottom, and now you want to pull up and step back at the same time. As you do, you want to go ahead and take it from the waist and just rotate all the way back in. And the harder I squeeze, what happens? The easier it is. Exactly. No matter, like I said, if, if I grab you and I set in a good stance, I'll get into a good fighting stance with you. I'm down low, I got a good center of gravity. Okay, just step back. Now, keeping with the theme of what we want to do, as I grab you, you're going to turn, you're going to escape, and run. Exactly. Kicks. This segment is dealing with kicks. At this time, I turn over to Jeff. Jeff is an expert on this subject. Jeff? The first point I'd like to make is that the high, flashy kicks you might sometimes see on television aren't always the most effective. We like to deal in kicks that come straight forward from the waist down. Anyone can do these kicks. The first kick we're going to demonstrate is the front thrust kick. Assuming a defensive tactic stance, our foot comes up parallel to our body, thrust through the attacker, hitting at the waist level. Again, comes up, thrust through, landing down, assuming another defensive tactic stance. Tammy, would you demonstrate? Good. Good. The next kick is the angle kick. Again, assuming your same stance, 
the right leg, instead of coming straight through, is now in a sweeping motion, hitting the thigh area. In order to do this correctly, we first need to preload our bodies. In doing so, our left foot, our lead foot, the one that's in front, has to actually point outward. What this does is cause a springing action for the other leg to react to. Again, landing forward. Can we demonstrate, please? The third strike, a knee strike. This can be utilized in several different occasions. First, in defense of a chokehold, grabbing the attacker's head, slamming the head into the knee area. Again, chokehold, grabbing the head, slamming into the knee area. The second strike would be a forward strike, grabbing the assailant's shoulders, slamming your knee into the midsection. Grabbing the shoulders or the shirt, slamming into the knee section. Demonstrate. Thank you. Front waist grab, arms free. Tammy and Jeff, what we're going to demonstrate is a waist grab with Tammy being grabbed by the waist and your arms free. What I need you to do, Jeff, is go ahead and actually grab Tammy by the waist, okay. not pinning her arms down. Like this? Exactly. Now, Tammy, if you get in this position with your hands free, what we're going to do is we're going to work the eyes. What I want you to do is bring your hands up to the eyes, putting your thumb, both thumbs on the inner pocket of the eyes with your other fingers wrapping around the ears. Now what we want you to do is we want you to press or gouge into the eyes until you have optic fluid. We're going to gouge straight in. And as you gouge in, to push into the eyes, go ahead and uh, simulate it, the, the attacker will loosen up. Now, remember when we talked about the punches? Right. Uh, okay, well what we do is double open hand strike to the chest area of the attacker. Strike him in the chest, push him away from you, and then you flee. Drive in, just like a pistons, like we did earlier. Again, we're going to cock from the uh, hip. I'm going to drive into him. Exactly. Okay, Jeff, would you grab her again? Okay, up. Again. Okay, push in. Exactly. Again, what we want to say is when you hit him, that works. back. That works. Okay, good. Don't forget, we want, want to exhale and say back. Okay. Back! Exactly. And then we flee. We don't stand there and fight him. As you have seen in this segment, you are asked to gouge your fingers into the eyes of the attacker. This could blind the attacker. Certainly not a pleasant thing to do, but you must consider that your own life might be in danger. You should not be timid in responding to violence when someone intends serious harm to you. Front waist grab, arms pinned. Tammy and Jeff, what we want to do now is the waist grab, this time, Tammy's arms pinned. So if you would please, Jeff, grab Tammy by the waist and pin her arms. Now in this position, what we want to do, the first thing we have to do is distract him, Tammy. All of his energy and all of his, his thoughts are right here on his arms. He's holding you in. So what we want you to do is do a headbutt with the top part of your head to the front part of your forehead and strike into Jeff's nose. That's going to be a distraction What's going to take the, the thought from the wrist into the pain in his face. Now he's going to, the eyes are going to start watering, so the first thing he's going to do is loosen up his grip a little bit and probably try to get away from you. When you feel that, you've got to bow back and give yourself some room. Grasp both hands together, intertwining your fingers, and drive into the groin area. Okay? okay. Now like what that. you want to do is, as he starts to bow over, go ahead and give him a two-handed push into the chest like we did earlier. Get him away. Again, back. You want to tell him what you want him to do. Back. I don't want you in my space, okay? okay. Let's try it again. Jeff, you grab her, please. Okay, headbutt. Exactly. Boom. And back. Good. Exactly. The second you feel him starting to, to try to get away from you, that's when you want to make your move to step back. And you want to step back and get a good driving force into the groin. Exactly. Rear waist grab. Arms free. 
Okay, Tammy, what we're going to do now is the waist grab from the rear with your arms free. Something you do is just turn around, please. And Jeff, I need you to grab Tammy by the waist, leaving her arms free. All right, from this position, what we want to do is a distracting technique to loosen up his grip, the attacker's grip. And what we're going to do with that is a headbutt with the back of your head now into his face. Snap back, hopefully striking anywhere. If you hit the nose, it's great. It's going to cause a lot of eye watering. But you hit him in the face, he's going to feel a little bit of loosening sensation. Then you want to grab either a thumb or a finger, and you want to peel out in this motion, exactly. Now, here's your avenue of escape, all right? Remember when we did the uh, wrist break? Right. Same thing. Only thing is you take a step forward. What you're going to do now is the elbow strike. We're going to go straight back in the elbow, into the solar plexus, exerting our energy back and fling. Okay? okay. Let's try it. Mm. Okay, first thing with distraction, which would be the headbutt. Then you get peel off, back, and then you flee. Okay, okay don't forget to exert back. Okay. That's, that's important. Remember, think of the piston again. Exactly. Okay, it's very good. Rear waist grab, arms pinned. Okay, Tammy, what we need to cover now is a rear grab with your arms pinned. So if you would please turn around. Jeff, I need you to grab Tammy and pin her arms. In this position, what we have to do again is, is escape. Headbutt for distraction to start with. As you headbutt back, you see what happens? The attacker's head moves backwards. You've distracted the technique. Now what you're going to do is bend forward. All right. Now, as you've done this, you've displaced the center of gravity from the top into his waist. Now you sidestep, taking your arm and doing a strike back up into the groin area, driving all the way. And you want to hit in between the legs and up. Exactly. You don't want to dribble it. And you, want to, you want to stick it. Don't recover it. No, you don't want to do it now. I don't think Jeff would like that. OK, let's try it again. Again, distraction. OK, there you go. Exactly. And again, after, you, after you've executed that, our avenue of escape is straight ahead. We're going to run. OK. OK, try it again. Headbutt. Back. Exactly. Again, after you strike, we're going to leave. Okay. One more time. Back. Very good. Okay. For those of you viewing at home and trying to practice some of these techniques, I need to disclose to you, if you're doing the headbutt or even a groin shot, be very careful because you could cause serious injury to the person that you're practicing with. Front choke. Front chokes. What I need to demonstrate to you is if an attacker comes at you from the front and begins to choke you, the first thing we need to do is tuck our chin. Why tucking the chin, what it's going to do is clear our passageway so we can breathe. But if he gets his hands around your throat, you can have about three to five seconds before you pass out from lack of oxygen. So what we do for demonstration purposes, we don't actually grab the neck. What I'll have Jeff do is help me in this sequence is Jeff makes two fists and puts his fist on either side of my neck. That's a simulated chokehold. What we're going to do, first of all, is I'm going to stand in a somewhat lax stance. I'm going to tuck my chin down. With my right arm, I'm going to throw my right arm over top of Jeff's right arm and right about the web of, his, of the arm. With my next left hand, I grab my arm and I'll pull down. But if I just pull down, I'm not going to do anything to him. It's going to be hard for me to really move it. So now with my left foot, I'm going to step. Again, the path of least resistance is behind me. I step and I rake down, pulling Jeff displacing his center of gravity and his balance and giving me my avenue out. A little bit quicker, what we're going to do, tuck, grab, down. OK, one more time. Up, tuck, down, and I'm gone. As you can see, as when Jeff leans into me, when I make my move, he actually starts following me. So as he follows, my next step is gone. Rear choke. The rear choke, we're going to demonstrate, if Jeff, you would please, grab me by the back of the neck. The attacker comes from behind and grabs you by the throat. Again, the first thing we do is tuck our chin, clearing the passageway, remember, three to five seconds. Now, the next thing we're going to do is in the morning when you wake up, you want to have that nice stretch, the same principle. You're going to stretch up, and as we stretch up, though, we're going to take our right foot, and we're going to pivot back, and we're going to roll. And as we roll, it's in this fashion, underneath, and now my arm is 
just underneath his elbows, and I raise up, hyperextending his arms. Step in, grabbing behind the head or hair, pulling down in this fashion. And as I start to pull down, I take my left foot and I step back. It's step down. Then we flee. Okay. It would. Over. Grab. Down. One more time. As Joe has explained, you apply pressure to the attacker's arms at the elbows, forcing the arms in the opposite direction of the natural bend. Continued pressure in this manner can break the arms at the elbows. Headlock. Headlocks. Timmy, what would happen if a person placed you into a headlock? How would you get out of it? I don't know. Okay. A good and easy way to do it, first of all, we've got to put you into the headlock. All right, Jeff, you would, please? Now, the first thing we want to do, Tammy, is we want to rotate our head into Jeff's side and face him and then bite. Now, that bite is a distracting technique. Now, step forward with your right foot and square off to, to Jeff as you're biting. Now, you're going to feel him loosen up a little bit. Now, take both hands, one in the front and one in the rear, and actually clap your hands and meet in the crouch area and smack. Exactly. Two, two or three shots, make sure that we actually get them. All right. Now, place your hands on Jeff's belt loop and push straight out. Back. Exactly. The, the key point is the bite is the distraction. That's all it is, to get him to loosen up that lock. Once you feel the loosen up and you, you face and you square off to him, you slap two to three times to make sure that we've actually hit the area we're aiming for, and then placing your hands on his belt, push away. Try it again. Now step. Back! Okay. Very good. Ground fighting. Ground fighting. What has happened is the attacker has knocked Tammy to the ground. So what Tammy has to do is get up on her hands and keep a good balance by her feet being flat, and what's going to happen, she's going to pivot as the attacker moves. Jeff, if you would move, as Tammy follows him around, always keeping squared off with the attacker. And if the attacker makes a move, what Tammy does is if he tries to come in on her, Tammy will roll on her side and kick below the knee and thrust in, knocking the attacker down, giving Tammy ample time to roll over and exit. Again, as she follows him around, he stops, he makes his move in, she kicks, thrusts down into the leg. Okay, very good. Rape. Unfortunately, rape is a common fact of life in our society today. What Tammy and Jeff are doing right now is a typical rape scene. The attacker on top, victim on the bottom. What we need to do to have a rape is at one point in time, Jeff is going to have to take his clothes off or Tammy's clothes off. So, Jeff, if you would, when he starts to make his move to take the clothing off, this is your opportunity to strike, Tammy. What we want you to do is, with an open hand, slap Jeff on the side of the face. Distracting technique. From there, we're going to go ahead and do a web hand strike to the neck and push him off of us and say, off. Rotate ah! off. Exactly. Okay, if you would again, Jeff, please. What happens if the attacker is now choking? Again, like we said earlier in the chokeholds, the first thing we need to do is try to tuck our chin so we can keep our passageway open. Now, what happened is the attacker has all his weight on the front. So a center of gravity is no longer at his belt. It's up in the top of his shoulders. So what you need to do, Tammy, is reach behind the attacker's arms, above the elbows, hyperextend the arms, push forward, and that'll throw him off of you. Ah! Exactly. Then you flee. Very good. With the open hand strike to the throat, as is demonstrated, you could crush the attacker's bronchial tube, suffocating him to death. Or if you can't get away from him with that technique, you could drive your fingers into his throat and around the bronchial tube, tearing it out or squeezing it until he breaks his hold on you or he chokes. Final statement.
What you have just seen may save your life someday. The techniques you have just seen cover the most common ways in which people are physically attacked. Practice these techniques until they become almost second nature. And then we hope you never need to use them.